So the all-party group on inclusive growth um, is the parliamentary partner of the IPPR's Commission on Economic Justice. And this afternoon, we invited the IPPR team to talk to MPs and Lords here at the House of Commons about what their report was all about. Afterwards, I sat down with Michael Jacobs and Tom Kibassi to tell us a little bit more. Okay, so um, Tom, Michael, welcome to the House of Commons. You've come along to talk about um, the interim report for the Commission on Economic Justice, which was launched last week. Just tell us about what's going on that means that actually there's a real market for these ideas now. We think this is a huge moment for reform. Uh, actually, reform of, uh, of this sort of magnitude has happened twice in the last century. It happened in the 1940s after the old economic system of the, of the 1920s broke down in the 1930s. And it happened again in the 1980s after the post-war settlement broke down in the 1970s. We think 2008 was a moment like the Great Depression, uh, the Wall Street crash, that marked the beginning of a breakdown in the economic settlement. We're not through that yet. We're not out to the other side. It's still going on. Um, and we need to describe the new settlement that we want uh, for the remainder of the 21st century. And, and these new settlements, these big moments, like after the Second World War, or indeed um, after the stagflation of the 1970s, they don't crystallise overnight, do they? They take a little bit of time to come together. There's not a big bang moment, that's absolutely correct. There is a shift in the understanding of how the economy works, and then a change in the overall rules by which the economy uh, operates, right? And the institutions and the frameworks uh, that are involved in the in the economic system. And that doesn't happen immediately. It takes time, but it does take purpose. So there does need to be a plan. There needs to be a proposal. There needs to be serious uh, legislation. There needs to be new institutions. But there also, at its core, needs a wide understanding amongst decision makers, parliamentarians, politicians, policy makers, and more widely in the public, that we need a really deep and fundamental set of reforms to our economic system. And what was really nice, Michael, about the analysis here was that you, you laid out very clearly why the UK doesn't have an economic model as an economic model. Just talk about some of those tensions that you saw. We point to a number of problems in the British economy, but we also point to many of its strengths. So we have some absolutely world-leading companies. We have uh, companies that are involved in innovation in the tech sector, in pharmaceuticals, in aerospace and so on, which are absolutely amongst the best in the world. And yet we also have a level of productivity across the economy as a whole, which is one of the worst in the developed world, and it's been completely stagnant now since the financial crisis. And this is an example of, um, of where s profound strengths are mixed in the British economy with tremendous weaknesses. And this is in many ways more of a muddle than a model. Um, but it's a muddle that we need to sort out because it's generating very poor outcomes. So if you look at our record on growth, we've had some growth over the last few years. But if you look at the record on earnings, on what ordinary people experience in the economy, which is how much they get from it in earnings, those have been stagnant now since 2007 and look as if they're going to be um, further stagnant until at least 2020, 2021. If that were the case, that would be the longest period in which earnings have been stagnant since the 1860s, 150 years. Now that's not an economy that you can call successful. Even though it's had growth, we no longer have earnings growth. And this points to something that has gone fundamentally wrong. And in the report, we talk about some of the reasons for this, the way our labor market now works with much more insecure work and so on, the way some of our companies and financial sector are combining to generate very short-term pressures on companies so that they don't invest enough and so on. So we point to some of the underlying problems here. What's really important is that people understand that things have gone seriously wrong. They really seriously need to be addressed. What was very interesting about the debate that MPs had between themselves listening to you speak this afternoon um, was that they were worried about the politics of forming a new consensus. I mean, Tom, how easy was it to get your very wide range of commissioners to share an analysis? I think what was striking was the extent to which we were able to form a consensus amongst the commissioners. Uh, I thought it would be much harder than it was, uh, but there really is a shared diagnosis of the problem. And uh, I think in many respects, as has been described in, by some of the commentators, the case is unanswerable. If you set out the evidence and you put all the facts down, it's very hard to reach a different conclusion. When you set it out, it's clear the economy uh, is unfair and isn't performing as it should. And that's how we got the consensus amongst the commissioners. But more widely, in terms of how the report was received by 
politicians. What was really striking was how it was welcomed from across the political spectrum, from the Labour Party, from the Liberal Democrats, the Greens, uh, prominent Conservatives. And so we think there really is a coalition forming around the case for real fundamental reform to the economy. And Michael, how do you build on it over the years to come? Well, firstly, we need to generate the solutions. This was an interim report which focuses on the analysis. What we do in the final chapter is to set out the direction of reform. We have some key principles. We have some areas that the Commission is looking at. And over the next year, we'll be investigating those further. And we'll be consulting not only with our Commission, but much more widely um, on some of the potential solutions. And also trying to produce a narrative that creates a story about the kind of change that we want. Because it isn't just about technical policy. It's also about people's understanding of the direction and of the, f and of the kind of economy that we want and how, as a society, we need to build the economy we want. That's why we focus on a vision here. We need to have a direction that we're going in. And we will be consulting and talking about that um, very widely uh, over the next year um, in order to build a broader consensus. Um, we have got, the, um, uh, uh, as Tom says, um, really quite a widespread understanding now amongst people who are really following this on the nature of the problems. And I think we've articulated them in a helpful way in the report. Um, what we now have to do is to build a consensus around the solutions. And that's obviously a more challenging task, but it's also a much more exciting one. Perfect. Lovely. Thank you very much. Thank you.